Hello everyone, I'm excited to bring you guys a beginner's guide to the wild darkness. This has been a project I've been working for a while. If any of you veterans find this video, feel free to correct me in any parts of the video in the comments to help out our new players. To begin the guide, let's talk about the basics of the game. The wild darkness is a turn-based survival game. Every action you do from eating, attacking, crafting, or moving counts as a turn. With each turn, the time of the day passes by represented by this clock up here. There are also phases of each day, the sunrise, daytime, sunset, and nighttime. All of them have meaning, but I'm only going to focus on nighttime and the daytime. During nighttime, monsters will appear from the dark, and if they see you, they will attack you. But during the day, the monsters will disappear like nothing ever happened. This is where the survival part comes in. You can craft armor, weapons, and structures to defend yourself from these monsters. To craft these items, you require certain resources like a branch and a flint, or rare items like this light tablet. Before you even have started the game, you are required to choose characters slash classes. There are a variety of different characters and classes, each having their own unique skill or ability and stats. You can unlock these characters by meeting their requirements or simply buying them with in-game currency. For example, to unlock the warrior class, you need to repair a structure called the Ruins of Light. The requirement for each character gets harder as you advance. Also, you can assign your chosen character with totems. Totems are stat increasers that help you during your survival. You can obtain these totems through opening the remains of your dead body from your last survival run in a box. You can apply these totems to your character with their designated slots. To unlock more slots, you need to meet the survive day requirement or pay up with star gems, an in-game currency. Totems can also be leveled up through combining several totems together of the same type into a better totem. Upgrading totems will allow the totem to give better stats in game. Additionally, you need to use some star gems to carry out the upgrade. It will only be a little though, like one or two star gems. There are three different totems you should know about. The three different totems are battle, magic, and survival. The totems serve different uses depending on their type. For battle totems, these basically increase any stat that are physical, like increasing weapon damage or increase the bleed chance. For magic totems, these increase any stats that involve magic, like magic crit damage or magic fire damage. For survival totems, these increase the stats of any survival related attributes like hunger recovery and starting the game with two rations of food. Since this is a turn based game, the time of the day only changes when you move. Also, creatures and structures will move according with your movement. If you move, your campfire timer moves. During a battle, if you move, your opponent gets a move. I think you get it. With knowledge about how the combat system works, I think it's a good idea to know what weapons you can use for combat. In this game, there are different classes of weapons, melee, ranged, and spells. There are also different rarities for each weapon, shown with color behind the weapon. Each weapon can also get an attribute, but we won't get into that. Weapons can be made through crafting, with the exception for spells. Spells can be obtained through an item called the Spellbook. With every Spellbook, you receive three options for which spell you would like to choose. After you have chosen, you can keep the spell. In order to use the spell, you will have to use energy points. You have a limited amount of energy points, so use it wisely. But not really, because you could just regain it after you have slept. When you first start the game, it might be a little overwhelming to see how many buttons there are. It certainly was for me. I'm going to tell you what some of the buttons do and how they can be used in some situations in the game. This is a thermometer and I have no idea what this is, but it really doesn't have any use in the early stages of the game. The thermometer shows what temperature you're at. Right next to the thermometer is a clock of the day. Pay attention to this clock because during the dark times of the day, monsters will spawn while during the day, they will disappear and will not spawn. This gear icon shows the game settings. You can change the sound and the music volume and most importantly, it can also change the game speed. This is your map. You can view the level you're at right now or you can view the world map. When you open up the world map, on some levels, you can see the icons above them. These icons represent what is there on that level. This is your XP bar. Not much to be said here. This shows your level and your stats regarding your survival. You can also click on them to see more in detail. The HP represents your health points, the EP represents your energy points, the middle stat represents your hunger, the cup icon represents your thirst, and the last stat represents fatigue. You may be wondering, aren't energy points and fatigue stat the same thing? Well, yes, kind of. 
The energy is for when you do actions that require some sort of mana, you could say. For example, when you use a spell, some of your energy points will be taken away. As for the fatigue stat, this shows how much energy you have left to do stuff like cut down trees, cut some grass, and stuff like that. This is a little confusing until you play some more and find out through experimenting. This is your sneak button. You can see one tile more when you sneak. This can also be used to sneak attack something. When you sneak attack a creature, it does a little extra damage. This is your wait button. This button makes you wait a turn. Remember when I said this game is a turn-based game? Yeah, you could just wait out the night by pressing this button instead of having to do something to get up to the morning. Or you could just sleep. But here's the thing. Whenever you have full energy points and fatigue stat, when you sleep, you won't wake up the next morning. You just use up one turn, so the waiting option is probably better. Crafting is simple and easy like in any other survival games. You must meet the requirements of the item you want to craft and then you can craft it. Some items need to be crafted right next to a specific building and some can be crafted on hand. When you're crafting weapons, you might have a chance to get cursed and blessed weapons. Cursed weapons have their stats reduced while blessed weapons have their stats enhanced. It shouldn't mean that much since you'll just lose a tiny bit of damage. Another way to defend yourself from creatures is through armor. Armor will enhance your defense stats and increase your chance of survivability. To obtain armor, you can craft it, opening play remains, finding equipment blueprints, or just finding it on the ground somewhere. Crafting armor is really simple, you just need to meet the requirements needed, and bam, you have your brand new armor. Finding it however is up to luck. There are different types of armor that you can have. There are shields, clothes, light armor, heavy armor. Hats, helmets, gloves, shoes, and cloaks. Artifact items, however, are what you would say the god armor of the game. Of course, to be the best armor, you're expected to have a hard time trying to find it or make one. In order to make an artifact weapon or armor, you need an artifact blueprint. Creatures are the main entities of the game. They come in different shapes and sizes. Creatures can also be passive, meaning if you just walk by them, they won't attack you and aggressive, they will attack you if they see you at all costs. Some certain creatures may need certain requirements in order to spawn. For example, shadow monsters only spawn at night. Some creatures have weaknesses depending on the environment. Some creatures may have a title next to their name saying something along the lines of giant, hungry, small, and elite. Those titles can change the way the creatures work. Creatures may sometimes hit your structures as well. NPCs are also in the game, but only one for now. The only NPC can trade with you for some good items if you're lucky. The highest level creatures are bosses. They are very difficult to defeat, but the rewards they give are used to advance farther into the game. Structures in this game can be either man-made or pre-built by the game. Building these structures is the key to you advancing the game. Also knowing how to use these structures will be a key part. This applies for pre-built structures as well. I'm going to go over some already pre-built structures and man-made structures so you have an idea of what the purpose of it is. First up, the Ruins of Light. This is the single most important pre-built structure as it allows you to create more structures and tools to advance the game with. The Ruins of Light looks like a circle of stones with an empty middle. Your objective is to fill it in the middle with an item called the Light Tablet. You can obtain the Light Tablet through defeating the first boss in the first and only cave. After you have repaired the pre-built structure, the ruin will give you blueprints to allow you to create your own structures, as well as more handy tools for you to advance with. The structure it gives are a level 1 workbench, armor bench, and weapon bench. The workbench can make useful materials like rope in return for some grass. The armor bench can give you armor and the weapon bench can give you weapons. After crafting these structures, they will unlock more structures for more and so on. Thank you.